Hey everybody, it's Colette Baron reed I'm ready for winter to be over. Oh my God. <laughs> Anyway, it is time for our weekly oracle card reading and lesson and guidance. And this is a six card reading that you're going to pick a special card for yourself first, one to six, starting over here. Card number one, two, three, four, five, or six. Remember when I read that card, that's the extra push for you this week. Now, let me tell you what a card reading like this is supposed to do, because there's a million ways that you can do a card reading. It's a matter of your motivation and your intention for what you're asking the cards to reveal. So this week, I think it's one, it's, I think we're close to the end of Mercury retrograde. I could be off on that timing, but we're, we're still in a process time where we are looking at our lives and re-entering them with a different perspective. So we're looking at what do I need to change? Or what do I need to look at in order for me to stay in alignment with my highest good and to create my dreams? Like, why are we here? Of course we want to create the life that we desire. And so I asked the question a little differently this week, like what could prevent us like energetically, like what's going on in the world right now that could kind of take us off track. So let's see what happens. And now that I asked that question this week to see how this is going to reveal itself to us. Um, and then I'm going to start right now with the first card. Now the first card is our anchor card, which means it's the one that's going to anchor the whole story. <laughs> so it's never ending story. Now, when it's in the first position, I call it the chicken little card, chicken little, the sky is falling, the sky is falling and it isn't. So this is talking about the self that gets conditioned by our outer environment. So this is what we have to pay attention to this week, because this is how we sabotage ourselves, which is actually perfect because it's so true. It's like, if we keep telling the story that we're not going to get what we want, we're not going to get what we need. Somebody else is going to get what's ours. Um, everything's gone to shit. <laughs> Beep, you know, like, and, and that the world is just like, oh my God, it's all going down the toilet or whatever, you know, like that real negative Nelly. And I'm sure, you know, people like that. Also, this is about unnecessary dramas that you get into. Like, you know, if you want to like pick a fight on the internet and be like, I know, like a, a keyboard warrior today, like me, <laughs> warning, warning, Will Robinson, warning. <laughs> this is the card this week that says, uh oh. So we need to pay attention to the old story that runs that who's really the basis is fear. And sometimes it's woven through with low self-worth, right? And how do we break out of our conditioning? Now we're not going to do it. Like, just so y'all know, it's not going to be graceful. Like there's like, don't expect nice and graceful. Like, Oh, I'm going to be so good at this. I'm just going to go, Whoa, I have a story. And you know, this, because if we have a story, we're splatting our story over other people, whether we know it or not, just by our attitudes that come with that story that runs at the back of our heads. So this is a great week to investigate that. And let's see what the next card says, because that's going to be interesting. Come here. We have a little thing on my, aha, the panic attack card. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. I, I should be careful which question I ask for the reading. So remember again, I'm going to remind you the kind of question I ask was given that we're in this kind of retrograde phase. And that means that we revisit, re-enter, um, you know, renew, um, uh, take inventory, all of those things get done during retrograde periods. Like we want to go over things again. So it's like, what is it that we do or that we might be influenced by that prevent us from having our dreams come true? Right. And, it's, and so many, this is about the inertia that happens. No coincidence. It comes right after this one. So I'm afraid I can't do anything. Oh boy. It's all crap. Why should I try? Or that's just going to happen anyway. I'm going to be apathetic and not do anything. So these are the things you got to really watch out for this week. And, and I, this, this calls for a media diet. This is <laughs> like, don't watch the news. It's like the coronavirus is coming to your backyard. Like all of that stuff, like the, this, this whole, um, fear based news cycle that we're all in right now. I mean, you know, it's really funny though. I was looking at some of my old, um, 
uh, my diaries from like 10 years ago, it was all, it's like every year it was the same story. <laughs> I was like, wait a sec. It hasn't gotten, it's just been a different story. It's the same story, different players, different things. It's like th there's chaos. Like we live in chaos and we have to remember, we don't want to create more chaos for ourselves. That's really, really key. So this is make a decision and take an action, but what kind of action? So we are at the fork in the road. What is the fork in the road? I'm either going to tell this old tale over and over again, playing our little miniature violins, poor me, poor me. Um, or we're going to say, oh, oh no, I'm not telling this story anymore. And this was like in the upside down position. I have to make a choice. I can't keep doing this anymore. And this is saying no. Now this is also if other people around you are caught in this and we have to be really kind I feel towards people who are in denial or unconscious about when they act out and do stuff because many of us have been conditioned to believe, for example, that anger is something that you, you're not allowed to have. And so you might not realize that a good use of anger is to protect your dignity. And instead you're like rage vomiting on other people because you've never learned how to have healthy boundaries, for example, and all this kind of stuff. This is a, boy, I can hardly wait to find out what's going on this week. I think I want to stay home and under the covers with a good book. However, that's not what I'm teaching you, am I? No. Okay. Card number three, chop wood. Excellent. So what does this mean to me? Well, this means to me that I would be taking some serious personal inventory on a day-to-day -day basis. And I will think before I speak and act. And I'm going to ask what would kindness do? What would love do? What would, you know, what is the right use of my energy? Like everything is a currency, right? Like even your compassion is a form of currency. I'm going to spend my compassion. I'm going to spend my privilege today. I'm going to, do I want to spend my anger? Hmm. Is this worthwhile? Is this, is this the right use of any emotion that we have? We have to look at that. Or are we being, you know, invited into a mob mentality? And this is, what does this say? This is a broom. Sweep, 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 sweep. So simple. Like, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, 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 no. This is the week to really enjoy this part and to like go, oh yeah, wow, that thing got active again in me. That like, oh, I'm not allowed to have an opinion or I'm not supposed to shine or I better not say my piece and, and are, are people going to like me if I'm successful? Or are they going to be mad? Or, you know, all those little things could come up this week. So again, this is going to this is a general reading and you're going to apply this to yourself personally in a way that makes sense to you. Okay. Now it's time for a puppy break. We're chop wood, carry water, aren't we? What are we doing? Are we doing that? Okay. So you would really, 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 really want to join my YouTube channel and you're going to subscribe to it. And what happens? Well, a little bell comes up. Yes, Tinky. And you click on that bell. And that means that you're going to get a notification in your inbox every time that I upload the two readings of the week. So just so you know, I do today's reading, which is the six cards. And then you picked your special card on top of that, which is what you have to focus on. And remember why you're doing this isn't just like, oh, she's giving me a reading. It's how do I stay in alignment with my highest good and move away the obstacles to achieving the life that I desire, right? That's, it's all about that, right? That's your question you're asking. And then your special specific really, really intimate reading is tomorrow because that's when I do the astro oracle reading. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I'm going to see you, well, I'm going to finish the readings. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put you down now, right? Yes. Okay, so I love the chop wood. That's fantastic. Now what's the next card? Perfect. Chaos and conflict in its protection position. And if you're new, when the card is upside down, I create the readings and the card meanings that they are there to protect us. So it's like a little extra hug from the universe to say like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, you know how when you're a little kid and you see, or when you see parents with their kids on strings and they go, whoa, that's exactly what this is. The universe has got a little string around us going like, oh, 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 don't do that. So this is not to be afraid of the chaos. This is really about going, oh, just not my chaos, not my circus, not my monkeys. Like I can make it mine not a good choice. It's not going to be good. Um, or I could observe it and I could be compassionate and I could just go do something else, which is the chop wood, carry water card. Um, but it also says too, that, you know, if you have something that is valuable of value and meaning that's meaningful to you, because not everybody, as we all know, you can say the most intelligent, meaningful thing. And there's going to be somebody who's going to basically call you BS. You know what I mean? Or like that, or that you don't know what you're talking about. Who cares? This is really important. You stay in the integrity of your own eye in the storm and go, what do I know for sure? And just work on what I know for sure this week. 
Um, and just don't be afraid of the chaos because it's not really going to touch you as long as you don't jump in and stir the pot on purpose, um, which people love to do these days. And they want to run away and hope, like Nikki Nine Doors. You ever do that when you're a little kid? Ring the neighbor's doorbells and hide in the bushes? Well, I'll admit this. I did it with my little girlfriend, Patty, down the street. We would ring doorbells and run away and literally pee our pants. We thought it was the funniest thing on the whole planet. And that's a lot of what happens on the internet. Like, right? When you see the, the uh, keyboard warriors, they, they don't, nobody sees them. They can't, they don't come to your door and step in and go, hi, let's have a cup of tea so I can insult you. No, they insult you and they run away in an anonymity. So it's kind of like a big giant Nikki Nine Doors <laughs> experiment right now. And you got to take it with a sense of humor. You just do. Um, I just don't bother with it. If it bothers you that much to get out of it, there's no point for you being there. Community. Yes. You have a community. Do you trust your community? Do you feel good in your community? Um, are you surrounded by people that you really love and that you have something in common with? Um, what I love about the internet, and I, I bring it up a lot because that's how you see me, right? We, we meet each other online in cyberspace. Wow. What I love and hate about the internet at the same time is the fact that there's the opportunity for community. Now, I like the word community because it's inclusive. It means that we can have all kinds of different people, like in my community, for example, like my Oracle Circle membership that you can't join yet, but you can probably April-ish or whatever. We have like 400 people in there that all are there for the same reason. They all believe in the same thing and they all come from different walks of life, but we talk about the same thing. So we have certain rules. So you can be in a community that feels safe, um, because you've agreed. These are the rules of engagement. This is what we believe in. That's why, that's why it's, there's a beauty in joining a church. There's a beauty in joining other communities like 12 step programs, things where you have groups together of like-minded people. Now you don't have that in say public pages. For example, I had to learn that the hard way, but I realized, Oh, wait a sec. This is like, this isn't my house. This is everybody's house. My house is behind that house. <laughs> so you start realizing that you may need to find a, a group or something that you feel good in. And you don't have to feel like it all the time. You actually can move on. Like you move on from teachers, for example. I expect that with my students, I want them to move on and find other teachers and, and grow and expand. And that's what I've done. So this is about a community that you trust and feel safe in. Now, this is, this is, this, oh wow, this is so interesting. This is the last card. So orphaned, never ending story and orphaned. Okay. These are the two pillars that this entire reading is about. Orphaned is about how you feel like your family doesn't understand you or you'll like, we find that people come to, to me and to us in my community where they're like, yeah, I was a black sheep of the family or like, yeah, I was the weirdo or I was the one that, you know, was misunderstood or bullied in school or, you know, or like, you know, I'm spiritual, not religious, but my family's really religious and they think I'm the spawn of the devil or something like that. I shouldn't laugh, but that does happen. Um, you know, so, so it's that sense of feeling disenfranchised or disconnected, um, and that you're looking for a home. So if you don't have the community, you're looking for a home. And that's what this says. It could also mean that in your community that you're going, I want to move on to a new one. Um, say for example, you studied, uh, like I'll give you my example. I studied Tibetan Buddhism for a long time, but I loved unity church. So then I moved there and then I went into the course of miracles. And then I, I did that until I wanted to do something else. So I learned and I had different communities that I felt super good about. And then it was like, okay, I've learned as much as I can here. Where else do I belong and where can I belong? And right now I'm studying with uh, my partner, Alberto Valaldo. So in, in, in Andean shamanism. So we find the thing that calls our heart and we go there. And that's what this is telling us this week. Stay out of your victim story. You know, if you're looking for a new home, go find one. And if you are feeling somehow that you haven't participated in your community, that may not have anything to do with them. It may have everything to do with that old story of being that you're going to be left out or people are going to figure out that you don't belong there, all that stuff. Cause you haven't said a peep and, and you're just assuming people aren't going to like you. So what a week. Wow. This is like a heavy week. Mark, we should have picked different cards. <laughs> Actually, I kind of dig this. I, this is the kind of reading that I really want to hear your feedback about this afterwards. Cause it really is like the superior experiment, social experiment of, of finding where we need to land and not taking our baggage with us. 
Here's a question I want to ask you and think about this. And I'd love to hear back from you. Do you join in because you are mutually joining in conversations because you're connecting through your pain point. For example, you're all mad at somebody, but you decided that you decide to be mad at them. But you don't know why, but they are. So you want to join in or for example, that the woe is me, the pity party where everybody's sitting on their own little pity pots going wah, wah, wah. like, right. It, Cause it makes you feel better. Misery loves company. Like are you, what are you, why, what's your, why, why are you where you are? Or who are you hanging out with? And why are you doing that? This is a really good week to clean that up. Seriously clean that up. Cause if you are surrounding yourself with people who you're dragging your energy down, now's the time to say, uh, uh, and guess what? They won't like you. Are they not that like you can't expect them to go, Oh, good girl. Good boy. This is a very good choice. No, they're going to be really pissed off at you and you have to live with that. And that's the other thing is sometimes you have to leave places and no, they're not going to like you. Okay, fine. So what? This is so important that we've, we're in this four year numerology. We're in this year, this month to the third month of the year. And we're looking and moving into the fourth and we're really seeing how do we communicate who we are with others? And what is it? Like, let's just say at the end of the day, today was your last day on earth. Look at how you spent your energy, how you spent your thoughts, how you spent your words. You know, what did you do that supported others and lifted each other up? That's what we're looking for this week. Do people throw, bring you down or lift you up, bring you down, lift you up. And what do you do to bring people down or lift them up? This is really good questions to answer this week. Okay. I'm done talking now. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. I want you to mark your calendars, March the 17th. Mark, isn't that St. Patty's day? Yes. Yeah. -ha! It's a lucky day. We are going to be releasing a zero cost masterclass all about me revealing my secrets of Oracle cards. I hope you'll join me. It's awesome.